Hey all, this is Val here with another Epic 7 video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Requiem Roar. As we all know, Talaria got uh, nerfed to basically heck and back, so we needed a new hero, a new 100% armor breaker that also offered combat readiness and hopefully could bring some other utility. And I believe I have found her. That is going to be our girl, Requiem Roar. I have six starter, I've been using her, and she is a great unit. Let's start off by taking a look at her skills. So her skill one is uh, Insanity. Claws the enemy with a 50% chance to decrease attack for one turn. I'm going to say something about this. This, believe it or not, is amazing. Like, it, it is so good. I do plan on getting this to the 75% uh, chance because it is just so good. Like, you, you hit Wavern with this, you hit anything with this, and their damage significantly drops. 75% is sort of reliable. I mean, it, it's it's hit when it's needed to, and of course, there's been times when it has, hasn't has hit. Because right now, we've got a 50-50 shot at it. But it's good enough to where it is worth going down in the tree and picking up this ability. It's just so good. So good. Now her passive, all allies absorb 5% of the damage they each inflict as health and recover 15% health every time an enemy dies. Now this does happen when an enemy dies. This actually is really good because when you're fighting boss monsters, they typically have adds and most of the times you have to kill the adds. Killing those adds actually will heal you, and it adds up and ends up being significant. Trust me, I've been using her for a while, and the heal actually is significant. It's really, really good. Health recovery upon enemy death can only be activated once per turn. It is really good ability. Trust me on this. Now, I haven't started investing points into this yet, because first I want to work on her skill 3, which you're going to see here soon, and then her skill 1. So now let's look at skill 3. A Dirge attacks with magic with an 85% chance to decrease defense for 2 turns and increases allies combat readiness by 20%. Soul burn effect for 10 souls is increases damage dealt. So by default, this only has a 75% chance. You can see where I did pick up the 10% effect chance. I'm now working on getting the 15%. I believe I am three uh, Maldragora away. So it, it is so good though. So 100% chance. And the damage it deals is decent damage. This is a really good ability and can replace our beloved Talari. She's gone to nerf heaven in the sky. I mean, this isn't as good as hers because I believe hers was on a three-turn cooldown at max skill, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me in the comments below if I am wrong. But this is just so good. She is a really, really good unit, and she brings a lot to the table. So, let's take a look at how I have her geared. Because she does have debuffs, debuffs that you want to hit, namely the attack and defense break, I went with speed and then effectiveness. You can see the stats of the gear here. If I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause the video and you can uh, see the stats a bit more. Now her boots are going to give me 30 at level 15. So keep that in mind when we look at the stats. Now for artifact, I went with Wondrous Potion Vial because I do run her with Diane. Diane's shield does cleanse. And because I have my Requiem War built fast, the faster she gets turns, the more likely that I'm going to get a chance to cleanse one of the debuffs between her and Diane. I can pretty much keep the team relatively debuff free. Now, if I had the ability, I think Celeste Sign would work on her as well, very well, due to her cooldowns and the fact that she is using skill one often. But unfortunately, I don't have a Celeste Sign, so... For right now, Wonders Potion Vial will have to do. Here's a look at her stats. You can see right now what she has. I am working on getting uh, more uh, speed on her. Like I said, we're going to get 11 more. That's going to put her at 183 speed. I do want her to move before um, uh, Diane buffs. Even though Diane's buff will 
benefit her. Unfortunately, that's just how it worked out. Trust me, I'm trying to get Diane speed up, but I'm not getting the drops that I need. I do want Diane to move first, but I thought it sounded cooler to make it look like I had this ulterior motive for her to move first. It's just how RNG went. She got really good speed rolls, and then these boots that dropped were decent. Now, how do I use her in a group? So you could build her seven wa several ways. Now, you could go HP just to make her tanky here, but instead, because I want to keep speed, this was the best that I had. However, given a choice, I would definitely swap this out and I would put in um, a speed with uh, effectiveness. I believe effectiveness is on the neck, if I'm mistaken, and not the, the ring. But if it is the other way around, then I would want to put either HP or defense speed here. Um, and then you can see here, I did go attack just because, again, you know, this is what I had to work with. She still does great damage, but however it would go, either I'd want effectiveness here and HP on the neck or HP uh, on the uh, ring and then effectiveness on the neck, depending on which one actually gets effectiveness, I don't remember. Speed is 100% set, though. This is exactly what I wanted here. But you can build her pure attack. This build does work. You can go just like I have here, crit chance attack and then speed because what's going to happen is her skills do hurt i mean she has a nice little sting to her um the more attack you have obviously the better you can see when you look at my gear here i didn't really focus on attack i do have attack on there but i really didn't put in gear that rolled into it i went with effectiveness because once you get to 100 percent you want it actually the land and the more effectiveness you have the less chance that the enemy is going to resist it so that is why you see a lot of effectiveness gear, but you can build her an attack build, and she will do great for you on that. It's just not how I chose to go with. You can also build her like I'm going to in the future once I get it with effectiveness, HP, and speed. That way you make sure that she is living as well as landing those debuffs. If you can get enough effectiveness on your ring or neck, whichever one it may be, that will allow you to pull effectiveness off of another item stat and then actually go like more HP or go more defense. So that way you make sure that she is actually going to live to be able to do the things that she needs to do. You can see she is fairly squishy for a soul weaver for me and that's because again, I have the attack stat. But you can build her several different ways. Now let's take a look at her awaken. This is what she picks up with awaken. Now you can see she just has 85% chance and the decreased defense for two turns, but when you awaken her, that is when she picks up the combat readiness. You can also see the requirements for that here. I actually have to start farming these bottles so I can get that sixth awakening, pick up a little bit more attack and some health, which is gonna really, really help her out. So I do wanna get it. It's just a matter of farming it out. You guys know how this last world drop one goes. It's, it's, it's not a fun process. Now, where do you use her? How do you use her? So you usually want her to go after your buffer because she does add damage. You know, it's every extra little bit helps. So ideally, you want Diane to move or whoever your buffer is. Then once Diane moves, then you want Requiem Roar to come in, armor break the target that you want to take down, and then you want to have your DPS go shortly after her. If you have a speed buffer like Yuna or something like that, you can have that unit move next and then have your DPS unit move last. But that is how I run it. My order currently um, right now is uh, Diane and Requiem Roar, then um, Lorena, and then after Lorena, pulling up the rear just in case people, we were cut, we took some damage, you have Destina to heal us up and top us off if we uh, some shenanigans happen in between there. Now you can use her that way in both PvE and PvP. If you are going to take her into arena and have her be your PvP unit, you definitely want to focus on HP and as well as um, defense because she's a little squishy. They will pick her off. I really don't recommend her on defense because of that and also because as we all know sometimes the turn order even though your speed is tuned correctly the turn order gets out of whack and i don't know why so for that reason i really don't see her on defense however she is great on offense i've been using her and have found great success with her 
that's going to do it for this review, really. Um, in, in the end, I'm really happy with Requiem World. Unfortunately, I don't have Tim Friendship yet, so we can't see her special face. I just have the normal, the upset, and the sad right now. But as we unlock more, hopefully they look really, really good. It just takes so much time to acquire that. And I really want to get this review out there to make people known that this is a really good unit. She's worth using. She's worth building. So if you've got her in your Galaxy Summon and you're like, oh, man, don't fret. She is, while she's not an ML Kin or ML Chloe, um, she still is very good and a great pull. I recommend building her if you're looking for a reliable armor breaker as well as some off heals. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you know a different build for her or if you have some other comments that I missed, please leave it down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, hit that bell button so that way you know when I have a new video coming out. As always, thank you all for watching and all you dudes and dudettes out there, stay frosty. Thank you.